So you want to start motorcycling, but you are strapped for cash. You are not the first person to be in this predicament. I feel like we get comments every time we mention an $8,000 motorcycle as being affordable about how unrealistic that is for many people. Unless you're older, have a trust fund, or just like to play fast and loose with your cash, it probably makes sense to be economical in your early days of motorcycling. Just because you can get approved for a loan on a $15,000 leader bike does not always mean that you should. It is just a toy after all, and there are other things you should probably get squared away first before going into debt over over a motorcycle. Flushed with cash? More money than you know what to do with? Cool. I'm not talking to you then, bozo. This video is something for my younger riders, working class riders, or sensible riders who would rather have a house and a family than a $15,000 personality. We're talking about the top seven used bikes you can buy for less than $5,000. That means I'm going to try my best to find bikes that aren't too old, but are also just the bang for buck for your 5000 bucks. Without further ado, let's get started. Today's video is proudly supported by shop.yamanoob.co. I'll talk more about it later in the show. Be sure you click that notification bell so you never miss our daily, sometimes twice daily, uploads. We'll start with what is likely the most obvious motorcycle on today's video, the Suzuki SV650. The SV650 has been regarded as one of the best beginner or intermediate bikes around for the last 20 years. It is sporty enough for a track day, comfortable enough for daily use, and has a power band far more usable than a 600cc sport bike screaming down surface roads in second gear. These bikes are fuel injected after 2003 and require super little maintenance outside. Best of all, they can be had for pennies on the dollar. While they'll always still run, you'll definitely find some of these bikes that have had the absolute crap kicked out of them for sale for like a thousand bucks, or you can find a cared for second gen SV650 from the mid 2000s or so with some tasteful mods for like $4,000 or less. A Gen 2 SV650 makes 73 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of torque from its V-twin engine and has a modest 437 pound curb weight. These bikes have dual disc front brakes and preload adjustable front and rear suspension, although suspension upgrades seems to be the first modification SV650 owners make when wanting to improve the handling of their machines. The SV650 is just a really solid all-around motorcycle. It is fun, reliable, and inexpensive. The SV650 is a motorcycle for someone who just wants a bike. They don't want a super sport or big cruiser or neo retro whatever, they want a motorcycle that has two wheels, an engine, it's much faster than a car. Seriously, SV does like 0 to 60 in like 3.8 seconds. And an SV650 is all of those things. And while it might not be the most exciting or unique option to go and get one, it is really impossible to go wrong with an SV. It's why we chose it as our S tier bike, and Josh watched that video, and it's why he bought one. Plus, there's a lot of aftermarket support and community knowledge on the platform. There's even an SV people meet dating site if you're looking for slightly above average companionship. The next motorcycle on our list is for people who want a little bit more extra spice and pizzazz from their naked bike. A little bit of red pepper flakes in their gabagool, if you will. I'm talking about the Ducati Monster. 696. Ducati has made quite a few different monsters since its inception in 1993, but an early model 696 from 2008 or 2009 seems to be the best bang for your buck when you consider the age, mileage, and condition of different monsters available for under $5,000. The Ducati Monster is an iconic naked motorcycle that just screams peak 2000s Eurobro energy. These bikes were a deliberate jab at the edgy Harley Cruiser market. Ducati wanted to make a motorcycle that was aggressive and badass for younger urban motorcyclists who weren't no damn Honda nerds. The Monster was kind of a tour de force naked motorcycle long before motorcycles like the NT07 came into popularity and at one point was responsible for 60% of Ducati's sales. Monster 696 has a 696cc air-cooled L-twin, not a V-twin, L-twin engine that makes 80 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque. While being the more budget-friendly Ducati, they still have top quality components like Brembo brakes and Showa front suspension. The Monster rides like you would expect a lightweight naked bike too, but with the extra character you'd expect from an L-twin bike made in Bologna. Is the SV650 probably a better choice? Yes, but come on, let's move on. You know, every so often a package like this is delivered right to my door. I like to think of it as my lifeline. I have the Yeetus. And these right here, my motorcycle supplies. I check my oil and I check it often. And why in moto make sure I got everything I need when I need it? And you may not know this, but every dollar you spend is an issue to win one of our giveaway bikes. And for those of you afflicted with the Yeetus, that's a pretty good deal right there. We got stonking V-twins, high hopped up inline fours, even beginner bikes. Anything you might need to help yourself with your Yeetus. We also sell tires, parts, gear, helmets, anything else you need for all your motorcycling needs. So if you're like me and you're afflicted with the horrible disease of the Yeetus, head on over to wyanmoto.co and get yourself one of these lifeline supplies. For more information, go to ynmoto.co or shop.yamanoob.co. That's co and not .com. Once again, that's shop.yamanoob.co. Click today. 
Speaking of rumbling character, the next bike on our list comes from Milwaukee. Nope, not the Sportster. Everybody knows you can find a Sportster for under five grand. No girls bike on the list today, except maybe for that SV650. I'm talking about a real Harley. A Harley Davidson Dyna. The Dyna platform was in production from 1991 until 2017, so there are plenty of different bikes on the used market. Dynas are still pretty sought after, so they're often way overpriced in stock condition or the base of $20,000 of a performance build. Performance Harley, a bit of an oxymoron there, but if you know where to look, there are plenty of Dynas from the late 90s or early 2000s in pretty mint condition and full boomer spec for right around 5,000 bucks. Old Midwestern dudes loved these bikes and kept them in pristine conditions over the years, and lucky for you, they aren't fully aware of the value of the dollar in today's world and are willingly letting to go these bikes for as cheap as long as you show up wearing Harley swag and can assure to them that you are ride or die for the barn shield. Look out for models with the FXD Prefix, so you got your Dyna Super Glide, the Dyna Low Rider, Dyna Convertible, etc. You can get a really lucky and get an FXDX Super Glide Sport. These bikes all had the 88 cubic inch twin cam V-twin engine until 2006. Completely stock, these bikes usually make around 65 or 70 horsepower and 80 foot-pounds of torque, but no one has a stock Harley Davidson, so it's a little hard to tell. These bikes are a super good platform to customize if you want a big bad cruiser. They probably have some of the most aftermarket support next to the Sportster, and will probably get you a lot more street cred down at the VFW Hall. And it turns out if you don't want a 650 pound motorcycle that makes 70 horsepower, slap on a two to one exhaust, slat them in seat, T-bars and quarter fairing and sell the thing to the hipster in the city for like 10 grand. Or you could just get an SV650. Okay, look, we don't want our viewership to drop off, so we need to get a sport bike in here ASAP. One of the best sport bikes you can buy for under five grand is a Suzuki Jixxer 600, baby. It'll do 186 miles per hour stock all day, baby. While the R6 and the CBR 600RR are all competitive 600cc motorcycles, they seem to demand a slightly higher used price. More brand simps, I presume. As a side note, I'm going off script here. R6 people are completely effing delusional nowadays. I saw a used 2019 R6 going for $15,000 on Cycle Trader. You're insane. I get that they're not making them anymore, but that doesn't mean you can charge 15 grand for an R6. Get out of here. There are also some cheaper Kawasaki ZX6s around, but they look more weight clapped out than the Jixxer 600s I'm looking at. Sun faded plastic stickers and the occasional flame paint job. Gonna pass on that and recommend the Jixxer 600. After 2001, the Jixxer 600 was fuel injected, so save yourself the headache and look for a model that is newer than that. This is the same year that the bike saw a decrease in curb weight down to 423 pounds. This bike is really just a race bike, so you already know what to expect. It's a fully fared bike with a high revving inline four fully adjustable suspension. It's pretty much all you need. From 2001 to 2000. Five, the Jixxer 600 made about 100 horsepower and 44 foot-pounds of torque. After 2006, the performance was bumped to 125 horsepower and 60 foot-pounds of torque. Holy moly. But it looks like the best-looking Jixxers for less than 5,000 bucks are from 04 or 05. Buying a Super Sport for so cheap will leave you extra money for tires and speeding tickets. Just kidding. A Jixxer Squid is just as likely to outrun the cop as they are to get a restraining order from their ex-girlfriend. But if you're, if you're looking at Jixxer 600s, just, just get an SV650. The next bike bike is for ADV dads on a budget, it's the KLR 650. The KLR has gotten a little bit of attention on the channel lately, literally very little as Spite has welcomed one into his personal stable, but it really is one of the best ADV style dual sport bikes you can get for less than the price of a cup of coffee a day. Okay, that isn't really accurate, and if you're getting into ADV stuff, there's no way you're going to sacrifice your visits to the artisanal coffee shop that is the whole point after all. For most bikes on this list, if you want to find one for less than $5,000, it is going to be like 15 years old, but nope. Not the KLR. You can find a KLR from 2017 for five grand. Hell, the base model in 2022 costs less than $7,000 to begin with. But if you're indifferent about fuel injection and you're looking for cheap, bulletproof bike to play in the sandbox with, look no further than the Gen 2 KLR. While it won't be as playful as a small dual sport, it more than makes up for it with its capability for long distances. The Gen 2 KLR has a 651cc single cylinder engine and makes all of 48 horsepower and 41 foot pounds of torque. It's actually kind of hard to find the last last gen's power figures, probably because that isn't why people ride these bikes. People ride a KLR, so they'll be the only ones left on two wheels once the nuclear winter begins to snuff out all remaining life on Earth, as long as they remember to replace the factory doohickey. I don't know what the hell that means, it's just KLR stuff. While nowhere near as prehistoric as the KLR, the Triumph Bonneville T100, the next bike on the list, is the quintessential retro cafe style motorcycle for people whose MySpace profile once said, I was born in the wrong generation. 
It is a cool, retro, trendy, artisanal, bespoke, organic, keto-friendly motorcycle from Triumph that is based off of their long-running line of Bonneville motorcycles made intermittently since the 1950s. The T100 launched in 2001 with an air-cooled 790cc twin. Between 2005 and 2016, the best years for affordable but contemporary Bonnies featured an air-cooled 865cc parallel twin that made 66 horses and 55 foot-pounds of totos. But bear in mind, they did not feature fuel injected until 2008. It's not always a deal breaker, but something to take into consideration if you live in colder climates like around the mountains or are allergic to carb cleaner. Also, going off script here, carb cleaner can double up as wasp killer. We tried this in the shop the other day, knocked out two wasps dead with carb cleaner. Crazy. The current Bonnevilles have a 270 degree crank, but the T100 didn't see that develop until the 900cc models debuted in 2017, so they don't quite have as nice of an exhaust note as the modern Bonnies, but if you're looking for a classic cafe style bike with a Triumph fit and finish and a sub $5,000 price tag, the Bonneville T100 has it covered. The last bike on our list is the Honda Goldwing. Had to have a little something for the touring guys. Everyone knows the Goldwing, they're big, they're heavy, and have as many comfort features as a Civic, reverse gear included. There are a ton available for under five grand, by the way, but most of them are gonna be the fourth gen, which ran until 2000. This era of Goldwings were the first to receive the 1520cc flat six engine, making it over 300ccs larger than the previous iteration. The Goldwing had just about every creature comfort you could expect on a motorcycle. Remote adjustable air suspension, luxurious passenger accommodation, state-of-the-art sound system, cruise control, so on and so forth. These bikes made 100 horsepower and 110 foot-pounds of torque, and to move its nearly 900 pound curb weight, that is a seriously large motorcycle. These bikes really run forever too. There's a guy who has a million miles on a first gen Goldwing, Al's is art. I don't know why, it just felt like that deserves a shout out. Thank you for your service, Al. Anyway, yeah, Goldwings are cool. Honda made a metric ton of them. Be nice to the old man that is selling his and maybe he'll cut you a deal. Good luck on your search for a used bike. If you're ready for more beginner motorcycle content, subscribe to the channel. We're always putting out new videos geared for beginners, so click that notification bell and stay up to date. And never forget, an SV650 is probably your best bet. Fact, three presidents, all founding fathers, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson's, and James Monroe died on July 4th. That's a true patriot right there. Goodbye. Keep, Keep watching, watching.